Hello and welcome to another update. In this one, I'll be covering the latest developments throughout the front line, starting out in the direction of Robotine, where here we see the Ukrainian forces continue their assaults across the whole front line. In the direction of Verbove, we see continuous Ukrainian infantry assaults by the trenches here to the west of Verbove. If we open the positions map mode, we see that the Ukrainian forces are Contesting the initial trenches here to the west of Verbove, the Russian forces still held control over most of it. However, the Ukrainian forces are now contesting the western parts of it, the outskirts of the trenches. And what we currently are seeing is that the Ukrainians ascend a tune after another from the first lines here to the west of these positions, after which they enter these trenches and fight through them and try to capture further parts of it. In the meantime, the Russian forces are responding by sending artillery shells and using their own infantry to fight against the Ukrainian forces advancing in this position. We also see fighting ongoing by the anti-tank ditches as well as the Ukrainian forces move through them to gain positions here by the first lines as they give them cover the same as trenches but worse as these trenches are built to prevent tanks from crossing over they aren't built for defending infantry but they can still be used for the same purpose so that's the current situation here in the verbova direction the ukrainian forces are continuously assaulting the russian trenches with small platoon sized groupings there are some videos showing some footage from these soldiers fighting through but it's not suitable for YouTube, so therefore I do not have them. But we do see that the Ukrainian forces are moving through these areas in small groupings of platoon-sized units and fighting one by one through the forest patches, the forest lines, and the trenches as they try to advance in the direction of Vabove. So the fighting here has been ongoing for a long time now. It's been going on for about two weeks so far and the ukrainian forces are slowly but surely trying to advance through these trenches and take control of them but they're still stuck by the initial parts of the trenches almost as if the russian forces are wanting them to advance to this direction and then use this area to hold them back because from a strategic perspective if the ukrainian forces tried to advance in the direction of the trenches and they were prevented from even entering the trenches then they would try to look for other directions to try and pass through but if they are able to enter the trenches then the russian forces could use that area to attack them which would even out the field a bit more which makes it more difficult for the russians to actually defeat the ukrainians however if they are preparing these positions to ambush the ukrainian forces then they will still have the advantage and because the ukrainian forces are able to actually enter the trenches then they may get more confident that they were able to advance in this direction and therefore they'll send more units the idea here is that this area in between the two trenches that aren't the same in other parts of the front we see that the anti-tank ditches and the trenches are right next to each other with barely any space in between but here there's a significant distance between the trenches and the anti-tank ditches so this area is most likely created to be some sort of zone where they decide to destroy the ukrainian forces trying to advance so they bait in the ukrainian forces across the anti-tank ditch and then they start their fires after the ukrainian forces have passed through and that is what we're currently seeing with the ukrainian forces trying to fight through the anti-tank ditch for approximately two weeks but so far have been unable to advance and by that of course they have managed to advance but at a very limited scale where they haven't captured any of the trenches yet they're fighting over it despite having crossed it for two weeks and this is why i refuse it to call it a breakthrough it would have been a breakthrough if the ukrainian forces managed to go through the trenches and cut off the bove from the southern direction then that would be a breakthrough but so far they've been unable to break through we then move on to the western parts of robotina where here we see that the ukrainian forces have managed to advance in the western direction and have managed to capture about half of the trench to the west of robotina there are also reports by deep state map that the ukrainian forces have managed to capture the final parts of the trenches south of robotina if this is the case then we see that the ukrainian forces are slowly but surely advancing in the 
the rope tenet direction and are closing in on solidifying the position here. And in that regard, I have tried to map out what I expect to be the Ukrainian goals for this offensive, that this is their maximum possible achievable outcome after yet another month to two of fighting. This is what I expect them to want to achieve. I don't expect them to achieve it, but I think that this is their limited goal because going to Tokmak is unreasonable and anything further than that is definitely impossible. So this is likely to be their current goal and will likely limit further and further as time moves on and they are unable to break through the Russian defenses. To the Remetsky ledge area where here finding continues, finding continues specifically northwest of Nolmeorske, but throughout this part of the front, but yet again there's been no advances, this is likely because the Ukrainian forces are trying to solidify their controls here by the river line and then push further southwards in the direction of Nolmeorske. It seems that this is now the center of fighting in this direction, the north of Nolmeorske, as the Ukrainian forces have been unable to push back the Russian forces to the west of Novodonetsk and south of Novodonetsk. This was likely to just spread out their forces and then make a hit here in the central part by Novomayorsk, but they've been so far unable to capture the village and they are trying and fighting for a foothold within the northern edges of the village. We then move on to the direction of Bakhmut, where here in the direction of Andrivka, there is an important thing that I need to cover. And this is because there's a lot of misinformation going around this village. So the reason I say this is because if you take a half a second look at what the Ukrainian side is saying about the capture of Andrivka, I took a look at the official telegram of the 3rd Azov Brigade of the Ukrainian army. And what I saw there was that the Ukrainian side was claiming that they had encircled a whole brigade of the Russian army in Andreevka and that they've managed to either get rid of everyone or capture the rest of them. However, this is absolutely not true and it is impossible to be true. Usually I say what the soldiers at the front are saying and take that at face value, but in my analysis of the reliability of sources, a very important factor to count in is is it logical? Is it reasonable what they're saying? I always factor that in whenever I take these reports and make a look at it to see the reliability of that report. And this report is unreliable because it is factually not true. And the reason for that is if we take a look at Andrevka, this village had a pre-war population of about 70 people. Where exactly is the Russian army going to concentrate 3,000 to 3,500 or even 4,000 people in this village. That is completely unreasonable. Even if we say that it is this general direction, the Ukrainian forces do not have control over this general direction. There are some gray zones here by the forest patches, but that's about it. The Russian brigade would be spread around not just this area right here by Andreevka, but most likely between the heights here to the north and all the way down south to Selenopilia, as well as heights in the back where they have some armored vehicles, tanks, infantry fighting vehicles, and artillery and so on. So if the Ukrainian forces want to claim that they have completely obliterated a Russian brigade, then they have to try harder than this because this is not even close to even being a reality. At most, the Russians would have a company or two in this area. And if that happened, it, this is still not even true because based on reports from reliable sources, from Syriac maps and other sources, even Deep State map, they reported that the village itself became a gray zone. The Russian forces withdrew from it two positions here in the forest lines, two positions here in behind the railways. So there was essentially no Russian forces within the village. And then the Ukrainians capture it and claim that they have destroyed a whole Russian brigade. I don't even know how they make this stuff up. And that is when I realized why people were calling me pro-Russian. It's not because they think that I'm lying. It's because they think believe this kind of stuff and they look at what the pro-Ukrainian sources are saying because this is literally a Ukrainian brigade claiming this. 
So this is, according to them, official sources, reliable sources. And in, uh, theoretically, this should be a reliable source. But this is utter bullshit. And if they hear this, usually, whenever the Ukrainians advance, they take no casualties and they wipe out a Russian brigade, then whatever truth I come with sounds like bullshit. Because if I constantly say that the Ukrainians are slowly advancing with casualties, and they hear that the Ukrainians are fastly advancing, taking huge casualties on the Russian side, and almost no casualties on the Ukrainian side, then what I sound sounds deranged. So the whole situation is that the pro-Ukrainian side is simply fed with so much bullshit that when they hear truth, that sounds weird. I'm not saying that the Russian side is honest at all times, but I usually never take these reports of casualties and so on at face value because everyone lies about them. The Russian side lies about them and the Ukrainian side lies about them. And the Russian side also claims that they sometimes wipe out brigades and so on. But I never include that in my reports. What I just say is that realistically, if you have to walk through a large field filled with mines while under artillery fire, you are likely to take more casualties than the other side who is on defensive positions, has superior firepower, and so on. So logically thinking, it would make sense that the Ukrainians would take more casualties than the Russians in this scenario. Meanwhile, the Ukrainians are claiming that they wipe out Russian brigades because the Russians are too stupid to withdraw from a village that doesn't even exist. Like, take a step back and think for yourself for a minute. This does not make sense. This is logically impossible. I had other things planned for this video, but in the heat of the moment, I just got carried away. But this is my honest feelings. If you seriously think that I'm the one lying and these... Ukrainian brigades that claim they wipe out a Russian brigade in a village of 70 people that doesn't even exist, that the Russians withdrew from over a week ago, then please don't watch my stuff. That's going to be all for this update. Thank you all for watching and have a great day.